Hello everybody and welcome back. Here is again Captain Sedaris and from the other side of the planet joins me Eben Hawk, one of the developers of the Company of Heroes mod Star Wars Frontlines. Hi, thanks for having me. Well, it's always a pleasure to talk to a developer of an amazing mod. <laughs> How did you come up with the idea to develop a mod for a Company of Heroes? Uh, I would say it goes way, way back. Maybe like a 2015, I would say. It's a very long ass time, but I can still remember. It's actually fresh on my mind. It all began in a forum called Relic Forums. I think that forums now is long gone, but actually uh, there's a link on Reddit that you can still check some tutorials on that stuff. So like Wayback Machine. So yeah, it all started in 2015 because uh, I was maybe I was just motivated because there was this first Star Wars mod in Company of Heroes that actually I was waiting to, I mean, to be made or to be playable. Then it came a time that, that the modification has been abandoned because, um, you know, I'm a, been a, a long a fan of Star Wars, you know, the whole universe of it, because it's an amazing world. And I mean, it's, it's still grounded because it's based on the World War II stuff mostly the weapons like that. So after the commotions, when the first Star Wars modification for Company Heroes was abandoned, and I began to plan things out, like, am I able to do this like that? If uh, Do I have the resources to even begin this? Because I, because I have no idea on how to mod games before. Uh, probably just textures on Warcraft 3. That's, I just tried some of that. And there was this uh, forum, there's a page like that on Relic Forum that you can post your ideas of modification. And then, yeah, I started the Star Wars modification, you know, just throw in some stuff of that on on how my mod is going to be played and how it's mechanics like that, units, and, you know, it's very over the top because I was very excited, you know. Sometimes uh, it's a problem because you keep putting and putting stuff on your, you know, in your work on what you want to do. And then there will come a time that you can you cannot even achieve that concept for the modification. So yeah, uh, it all started there on the website. I can't even imagine how it is without developer knowledge to start a mod project. It's really ambitious and yeah, impressive. I would even say. Are you in real life in a tech area or what do you do in real life? Actually, I just uh, graduated like two years ago some multimedia but um, it's, it's very vast i would say because you you tend to learn stuff like video editing uh, art design like that but i choose the 3d aspect so now currently i am doing a freelance work for a vr game so yeah that's mostly what i'm doing uh most of the time and actually doing the modification at the same time because you know uh doing freelance is very fluid you can do uh the freelance and the modification at the same time, but I tend to put much effort on the modification because, uh, you know, I want to build some stuff, you know, put in game and testing out and pushing the limits like that. So, yeah. I also think we should maybe summarize a little bit. What is this mod about? Can you give us a short summary? Yeah, uh, I would say it's, it's a grounded uh, take on the Star Wars mythology. Because uh, what I'm presenting here, the Company of Heroes uh, Star Wars Frontline mod is, you know, the the greediness of the Star Wars uh, universe when it comes to ground battles like that. Because sometimes you just saw on the films, like most Star Wars films, like it's, you know, it's very uh, short lived when it comes to the battles. And it all began when I watched the Rogue One. You know, that if you have watched that film, I mean, that's one of the best Star Wars films that I've watched. And it's amazing on how they you know, interpret the Star Wars, you know, the combat like that, because everything just gets wiped out in a minute or a second. And I think that's where the drive blossoms, I would say. And yeah, I think Star Wars Friends line is like a company pure of Star Wars with Star Wars flavor in it, you know, because um, company pure has this very grounded and gritty gameplay and, you know, uh, mechanics like that. And then when you transfer the Star Wars into that, it's like a perfect combination. Because, I mean, uh, I've been dreaming about a Star Wars RTS like Company Heroes, 
but then um sadly we still don't have that one so uh, yeah i mean I'd say that's still one of the the driving forces that i started the modifications because of that because we have this limited games star wars when it comes to rts i think currently we only have emperor at war which is uh, I mean, it has very good space battles, and, and up to, until now, there's still, uh, you know, modifications being updated for the game. Combat on the ground is, uh, I cannot say much, because I'm not a fan of that gameplay when it comes to, you know, like battalions that you just throw in there, you know, like that, no cover system like that. So there's not that much of a tactical advantage when playing on Imperator games when it comes to ground battles. Yeah, definitely the combat aspect on the ground is very bland in Empire at War. Yeah, I can agree with that. I guess most fans don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> Talking about other games, what other games did you play in the past and what maybe are a little bit of inspiration for this project? I would say Dawn of War. I mean, let's say there are games that, you know, like make, they make RTS games like they don't pay attention to the universe itself. I'm not saying that it's it's not that good when you create an RTS game that you're basing your game to a mythology that has, you know, like guns, tanks, and you don't cover, you know, it, it's, I mean, it's not sensible when it comes to that. But yeah, uh, Dawn of War is one of the games, um, most played games that I'm still playing to this day because, you know, it's, it's very complex in that time. I think it was released in 2005 or eight. I'm not mistaken. I mean, it came out first than the Company of Heroes, which is surprising to me because uh, Company of Heroes is a much more advanced game than Dawn of War. And Dawn of War up to until now still has the tools and updated tools for them to make models and stuff like that. And uh, I would consider like Battle for Middle Earth too. Yeah, I played most of games like that. Because it's, it's very, um, very tactical, you know, it's cinematic. I like games that are more cinematic and, you know, you are there, you know, atmospheric battles like that. And then you apply your mind on multitasking the units that you're going to use because it's actually a uh, rock, paper, scissors when it comes to some artists uh, before because you have to know what units are you going to use and you know, like that, you know, their passives and their weaknesses. So you're just going to throw your units in there. It's not just spam and spam like that. So you'll have this situation that you have this blob of units then just drop by a mortar, then they're all gone. Yeah, that's I think that's one of the inspirations on why I choose Company of Heroes as a uh, modding platform for the Star Wars. And when did you start playing Company of Heroes? Was this directly at the release or did you join later? Uh, I think I was later. The first time I played Company of Heroes was like, 2012 i think or 2013 like that i actually discovered it in a website like company peers online and i'm not really sure if it, it's free game or something because this i really have no idea on you know what steam was like that because but when i saw the company peers you know the gameplays like that you know i was i was hyped because you know i'm uh, i was thinking like i'm just could try this out and then yeah i mean it all started in there played and played a lots of games of company peers i think you're right company of heroes Online was a free-to-play version of the game, which only lived a few years after the release. I think I think they shut it down around 2012, 13, 14, something like that. That's cool, because because I was actually wanted to play it. You know, when I got the chance to buy the whole DLCs like that, then I bought it. You mentioned that there was another company of Heroes mod which tried a similar think in creating a Star Wars mod, basically. Uh, did you use any of their stuff or did you do everything completely new? Uh, I mean, everything new, actually. Uh, you know, I'm an advocate of not using models from other games because uh, it's, not a, it's not just because of stealing people's other work, but, you know, when you're creating this stuff, it's like you're actually creating a new game for it, you know. I mean, it's like more rewarding and more of a passion when creating on your own. Actually, at first, when I actually doing custom models for the company peers front, front lines, I was just using a basic mesh of all the soldiers because I don't know how to skin yet. Like, 
Like I'm still using the basic meshes of the soldiers and they didn't even re reduce their arms like that. I just put some gear, no skinning or what like that. So they look very chunky. And I think that's was 2018, the first release. And, you know, I'm still proud of it because I managed to achieve it. Uh, I mean, not on my own, but, you know, with limited resources because our development team is not actually big. I actually started uh, on my own, then we began it too. Uh, I would like to mention Sir Psycho because, I mean, he, he's been the mentor for me when starting the modification itself, like, you no, know, giving the aspects on what can I do like that or what can I edit, which is very, very overwhelming for me before and up to until now because he's actually a veteran of a modification way, way back. I think it's a zombie mod and it is very intricate and he do stuff like uh, not possible for company peers, which I cannot do. So you learned a lot from him and I guess from guides online or did you watch some YouTube videos? How did you educate yourself in a subject you basically didn't learn at high school or somewhere else? Uh, actually, I go to school for two times and graduated. Uh, I actually take as a craftsman course. So I have an idea on how 3D things work like that. So it's more of a structural design. So I hate it because it's too blocky and I really wanted to create, you know, humanoids, mostly vehicles, tanks, you know, more unique stuff like that. But yeah, mostly I watch this, uh, I watch some uh, tutorial videos when it comes to, you know, importing stuff like that. But I would say our resources as models of company heroes is very, very limited because some of the files are just missing now. I mean, I'm glad that uh, someone from Reddit managed to compile all digital stuff and put it in a Wayback Machine. So probably some, you know, newcomers of Company of Heroes modders who, who want to mod the game can still have the resources in there. Though very limited because uh, some of the old members of that forum are probably long gone. I mean, not even using the internet. But uh, to my surprise, we have now a Discord server. So most of the veterans are in there as shooters, you know, which is, I mean, that's, that's cool because, you know, uh, even though we are very limited in numbers when it comes to modding the company of heroes, uh, you know, we get to share the ideas that we want to do, you know, uh, different, uh, backgrounds, you know, so we all coexist and actually that's a good thing. And I like that. I also wanted to touch this subject. How big is your team? Before we're only three, actually. Yeah. Actually, we were just three before. Um, me, Sir Psycho, and there's this one named Ewell. Ewell was actually, you know, more of a balancer guy like that. But maybe due to circumstances, we dwindled and we just now remain to two for, I think, three years. You know, you know, it's uh, it's very hiatus when it comes to doing stuff because we're not that many. And I actually wanted to do more and more stuff for the mod. Then, yeah, then school came and then I don't have much time on doing the modification because I have to focus on that. But when we release uh, this newer version that actually that the people play right now, um, people come forward to help us. And, you know, I'm happy, you know, that people will offer their, you know, creativity and their assistance uh, on their modification because they're impressed on, on how the modification uh, works policy and the company peers engine yeah and i hope that we could grow more like that you know at the coming years or so and actually uh and i hope that those people who wanted to help us will have a you know a good coexistence because there are some people who just wanted to join and then they just want to throw their own ideas to us and then without even thinking because they want this oh this is good and this is like that and and actually us, you know, thinking about, I mean, it, is, it doesn't going to work because we have these limitations on the modification. It's doable, but it's going to be junky. So we're not that many, but I mean, we are capable of doing stuff. And I have really to say, I appreciate that you released this version. And I also think it will help you in the future because I saw so many mod projects in the past, which died out because they hit a wall, they couldn't climb over some problems in the code, whatever. And they lost the motivation basically because 
they didn't get any real feedback from the fans and also no help from the community because yeah it was just a, a, their own bubble and they couldn't get out of it so it's i think always good to release something it doesn't have to be perfect but release something so the fans are really excited and you maybe have some kind of advertisement to get more help Yeah, uh, actually, um, before I release the, uh, this newer version, we are having thoughts actually in releasing it because, you know, it's playable, but it has these missing features like the texts are not, you know, correct, like that the descriptions are not correct. It's very imbalanced. So I had to launch, you know, different fixes and patch, you know, for some people. And actually now I, I'm done actually on the balancing aspect so people could enjoy it more. I would say, because uh, some people are, you know, they have these good ideas, you know, like, let's say lacking units like that, you know, to make the game more you know, longer like that, you know, more challenging, because currently now the modification, you can just spawn all the units. But of course, it still has this um, resource management, because in, on this upcoming balanced version, you know, things get more shaky when it comes to gameplay, because Uh, I think I was watching this video of someone on YouTube that they can't even kill a, a rebel sapper, you know, engineer. And I was really, really frustrated because, you know, it's very, very imbalanced. So I got the initiative to balance it out, you know, to check all the aspects, you know, the health, the damage like that. And actually, um, with the, uh, let's say with the data that I have gathered much from my colleagues on the modification and other people who want to test it, I think it's now in a safe place to be a balanced modification, I would say. Uh, I mean, it has its flaws still, but it's a good balance right now. Yeah, balancing is always a tough subject in mods and games in general, I would say. What other problems did you maybe face in the transformation from Company of Heroes to Star Wars? Is the game even hard to mod? Hmm, uh, I would say it's a, uh, let's say it's a 50-50, I would say, on modding company peers because it's not that very, you know, uh, very open source when it, games, when it comes to other games. Like you can change everything like that from sounds to what, though you can change sounds and other stuff here in company heroes, but it's very, very limited and you, you have to like adapt on the, games uh, limitation when it comes to that because one of the shortcomings I'm actually facing on modern company peers is I mean it's not that big but we cannot make let's say uh, our own effects which is uh, which is a shame because I really wanted to make the lasers glow uh, actually I have a test that I've shown on my team about the laser stuff and it works but it's very janky and and actually we're still uh, fixing it right now because um We really wanted that laser effects for the company bears because it, because it really looks cool. You know, let's say uh, in a rainy, rainy battlefield, you know, and then there comes a firefight, you know, the lasers glow side by side uh, everywhere coming from. And then those sounds, you know, it's very atmospheric, which is very cool. And I hope that, well, we can fix that at some point because I, I really wanted to add the laser effects and also the sounds because, I mean, the sounds is fine to work, but It's not that easy, like changing the path or something, because we're using hex editor for it. So it's a very complicated. So you have to double check everything before testing it, because it's actually very frustrating if you're just missing one letter or just you put space on that path. It would not work or even crash the the mod when you start it. So I'm very lucky, you know, that I managed to make the mod seamlessly work no bugs i would say i mean there's still bugs but it doesn't crash most of the time and people can play it multiplayer and and it acts cool is there even a good documentation about modding did the developers put out there at least some help oh yeah actually on reddit you can check it company heroes modding wiki i mean it's all there from the start you can get all the tools you want to start the modification uh, like that it's all documented in there so I'm very lucky and hopefully the others who wanted to join Mountain Company Heroes, the resources are there and they can start uh, whenever they want and, you know, ask people out uh, on our Discord because we have Discord. People ask out there and people answer. But was this all fan created or did the original developers of Company of Heroes 
if any help, any tools? Actually, yeah, I think that the uh, we have this tool called the Object Editor. I think it was released by uh, Relic Canada, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm wrong, uh, I'm sorry, I think, because um, I was actually seeing this programs before when I started the modification. Yeah, this titles like that, it's came from uh, Object Editor Canada and stuff like that, or I may be wrong, but it's more of a uh, cooperation of the community itself. So the people of the community also make tools. A good example is the Corsix, I would say, and other tools which are community made. And it actually works flawlessly, but some things on the game cannot be brute force or open, you know, and edited simply. Though you can edit it, but gonna have some hard time dealing with it. And I would just not bother doing that stuff. But hearing this, I guess you had during this whole development many problems. Were there any features which you just couldn't implement the way you liked? I would say not, because uh, most of the Star Wars, you know, when it comes to, you know, the firefights like that, um, we managed to capture it, you know, in a in a good way, you know, and I'm proud of that. But some dudes who wanted to, you know, recommend the Jedi stuff, I don't know about that. Though it's, I mean, it's possible. I think it's possible to make a Jedi unit on the modification itself. But I mean, that would take time, you know, animation like that. But it's possible, I think. But, you know, the, the one thing last time I said is the laser stuff like that. I think that's the only hurdle that we, we can do if our own effects. I'm actually jealous of the Dawn of War modding community because they have the latest versions their latest program so they can do their own stuff like the effects like that you know and it's actually cool you know i mean i hope i hope someone could make some sfx editor for company of heroes you know i doubt it maybe someone but currently uh company of heroes uh you can do a lot of stuff i mean you can make some condoms or something here on modif uh on modding company of heroes actually cool platform to be it has a learning curve but You know, everything is doable, I suppose. That's good to hear. But talking about shaders, I think it would be really difficult not only to create a melee unit yeah. in Company of Heroes, but also one which can deflect enemy shots. <laughs> This will be a tough one, yeah, in any game, I guess. Yeah, I mean, Emperor War has this, you know, laser stuff like that, you know, the Jedi, but... I think they can deflect lasers or what, but I think they just charge on the battlefield and just sway around uh, on the enemy. And being at the subject of the future, what can we expect? Are there more buildings coming? Maybe some voice lines? What do we have planned? Oh, I'm actually excited for it because uh, people are coming to us. I mean, not just to us, but to me about adding their voices in some of the units because Uh, you know, we, I mean, we don't want World War II voices in the Star Wars, you know. I mean, people said it, it fits because, you know, you have this stereotype of the of the World War II like that, of the Star Wars, you know, which is cool. But people are, you know, coming to us like, uh, well, maybe you could add our voices there, you know, because the idea of the Star Wars for company picture is cool. So, you know, it's some people are nagging, ah, they sound German and like that, you know. And of course, I mean, if this Galactic Civil War is successful and we manage to release this, because we're planning this another big update that will include the heavy units, uh, I would say the AT-AP in the AT-AT will come in and some land speeders, I would say. The Empire will, I think, will have more vehicles uh, on the coming big patch, I would say. And most of the models are now on work in progress. So I'm happy to say that. And if we manage to finish the galactic civil war era we could go to the clone wars which is i'm very excited if uh and i would love to work on that uh, it's gonna be cool in a company of heroes you know clone wars droids so i'm excited that would definitely be epic i like also that you want to be uh, able to switch the different eras it's nice that you not st stuck on the idea to only have the galactic war Yeah, yeah, I, I, that actually that was the first, uh, you know, first iteration because uh, I saw the older mod that I, that I said before, the first Star Wars mod, it mostly focused on the Galactic Civil War era mod, era. But then when I managed to get progress and progress on the modification and saw the possibilities that I can do, comes to my mind that 
maybe I could start a Clone Wars mod for this. And it's gonna be cool. I don't know how the works, uh, I mean, how the droids will work because the droids don't go to the ground or need or something. Maybe they do, but if I were to make the the modification for the Clone Wars, I will make the droids more of a, you know, automaton, like they're walking battalions, you know, shooting so many laser fires. They're not scattering. They're just there walking and marching. And you have this clone troopers who hides, you know, because of this hailing fire. And it's going to be cool. And I wanted that to work, work out for company players, which is possible, I think. I think you also have much more content from the different episodes of Clone Wars than you would ever have from the Galactic Civil War era. We only have the few movies and yeah, you could also count Rebels to it, but Clone Wars was such a big and long series. There's so much in it, so many units. Yeah. Of course, you can also take some ideas from other games. I don't know if you ever played um, Force Commander, which was the first RTS game in the Star Wars universe. It had also some unique tanks and ideas. I, I mean, yeah, I mean, that, that, that's a possibility, you know, but sometimes I manage to mix the canon with the, you know, the expanded universe because sadly the older lore, the Star Wars was decanonized. I mean, due to Disney, I'm not blaming them, but whatever, they, they decanonized the older lore. I mean, who have this good you know, units like that, you know, ideas, you know, dark troopers. I mean, before there were no dark troopers in Star Wars canon. And then when the Mandalorian came uh, on the season two and they launched the dark troopers, you know, I the idea just comes into my mind. Maybe I can put the dark troopers in my modification and that would be fucking cool. And I would love that. And, you know, pertaining to the Clone Wars, you know, um, I still wanted to grab myself on the, you know, the canon stuff like that. Because I like the old Star Wars. It's not that I don't like the current Clone Wars that we have right now. But, you know, you have this very mysterious when it comes to this to the Star Wars universe before. You know, if you've watched the 2003 Star Wars Clone Wars, you know, the prelude to the episode three. I mean, that's very cool, you know, to show the, you know, the vastness of battles when it comes to the Clone Wars. I mean, and now we have this you know, the CG Star Wars Clone Wars like that, maybe a tone down, but you know, I love the older Star Wars lore. You know, you have this Timora Morrison like that. I'm a fan of the voice, you know, because it's the, you know, like the clone, as in the clone trooper that you can hear mostly on my mind. The Bad Baker, uh, you know, uh, made a good rendition of that, like New Zealander accent like that, but and I'm still a Timora Morrison fan. And hopefully when the modification for the Republic, you know, the Clone Wars came, uh, I would maintain that, you know, authenticity of the Tamora Morrison for the Clone Wars. But with the weakness of the Clone Wars that we have right now, I mean, that's going to that's gonna be cool and surprising, you know, say, and interesting. Can't wait to play it. One thing I guess every player immediately knows is that there are not really much buildings. Are you planning to add more buildings or isn't that your focus basically? Currently, yeah. I think we are now actually doing some build tree when it comes to the you know the units because players just you know just spawn and spawn units like that. But actually we are now working on a build tree and a research center. So the battle can be much more longer and much more punishing. The units will be very, very toned down uh, on the next upcoming patch and of course supported by the new vehicles and you know uh, updated maps uh, actually i'm working right now perhaps for the hot you know i'm actually recreating the you know, the whole set of the echo base and and actually going smooth i would say but yeah the, the buildings would be you know be added you know more variety when it comes to structures because we only have one you know structure the barracks which is actually the first time I wanted to, you know, to integrate that kind of model to the game because we have these landing pads, you know, and I mean, it's cool, but I do get the people who play who wants to to build more stuff. But yeah, it, it will come and we have plans for it. A question from the chat. What do you use to create the models? Do you use maybe Core 6 Mod Studio or Autodesk 8 or something newer maybe? 
Oh, yeah. Um, currently, I'm using, um, you know, Maya for creating models uh, because I started in there. They all use Blender sometimes, but it's mostly mostly for you know rendering and stuff like that. The 3ds Max, I'm sorry, I'm not that well versed, but I'm using it only as a burner tool for the models because you know that's that's the problem with the tools that we have right now. It's very outdated, and we have to use older tools, you know, older program, which is a 3ds Max 8, which is go way way back 2008. And there was this instances that I updated my you know graphics driver and and the 3ds max didn't work anymore so i was panicking like that how can i do stuff i can I continue doing stuff like that i can open the files anymore then i got to hiatus for like i, I focus on the balancing actually and then i managed to you know risk something you know i downgrade my drivers for my graphics are didn't work which is a 2020 uh graphics driver and it made my 3ds max work uh now i can burn stuff you know test things out you know make units and weapons so yeah and of course uh, on the upcoming patch uh, i posted in the discord that there's new two new weapons you know to at least uh, make some variety in the units because the empire has only like one major weapon uh yeah mostly the e11s like that so i added the e10 it's a much more uh, downgraded version of the e11 which is still powerful i would say because um say um mass produce weapons like that talking about the different weapons and units and everything what would you say is your favorite what is your proudest baby the e11d i would say ah i would say that's my proudest weapon because it's the sound it's so cool i mean when the rogue one uh you know the movie dropped it's so fucking cool you know the, the sound you know the muscle sound of the laser it's so cool and then when i you know when i made that weapon you know, because the Death Trooper is actually in-game, like way, way back, and it's not that fully integrated. When when I started to create the model itself, uh, was uh, I was thinking that I, maybe I should make another weapon for the E11D. And then, I mean, that's it's an amazing weapon. Like, when you spawn it in the battlefield, let's say the Death Troopers, when you hear that, oh, god damn, you're gonna, you're gonna make your units from, because I actually buff it now, the Death Troopers. They're more deadly right now and they can be equipped by dlt19 so they can just strike havoc on a squad but of course it's not they're not uh invulnerable or something they could also die very quickly so the balance right now is very more of a rock paper scissors so you have to go to the defensive positions like that and you can have long fire fights i mean it still has this core concept the older versions of the mod but it's more of a balance right now so you have this uh more personality when it comes to units a good example right now is the rebel troopers because the rebel troopers on that game is much more if a elite now but on my advanced version they are the basic troops right now still powerful but they're not that many and now they're going to be countered by the imperial troopers who has very good in numbers and they have these buffs actually there's a good explanation on why i did that because according to the lore you know the, the rebel troopers were this mercenaries you know from different planets they just pick it up and most of them are you know hardened you know probably criminals or something so they are more um skilled when it comes to combat and you have these imperial troopers who are i may say they, they're trained but they haven't experienced the battle you know so they're very new they're very good in numbers but when they have been supported by heavy weaponry like that they could they could crush everything and yeah i mean the stormtroopers have been balanced right now they're more tanky and deadlier than before so i can't wait for you guys to play it because i'm very close to it just a little tweak and then i would be releasing it no doubt so the next version is already on the way yeah almost ready i would say that's good to hear since i saw the unit just a few minutes on my video uh the landing vehicle where came the inspiration for that that you land basically also your troops and not spawn them in the building oh uh from the mandalorian i would say i mean if i'm mistaken it's like the uh you know, the last season of the mandalorian and it's like the first iteration of the landing vehicle of the empire though they have this on star wars force awakens you know they have this first order landing vehicle but i'm not a fan of that i would say it's you know very over the top when it comes to the later star wars movies you know they much more futuristic which is cool for some but not for me so the inspiration for that is from these the mandalorian itself you know that like when boba fett was 
uh, helping the crew out, you know, Mando. And yeah, when the drop ship uh, arrive on the scene, you know, it's cool. And they have these mortar troopers, <laughs> which I add on the modification because they they look unique. You know, they have these yellow stripes, you know, the mortar itself. I added two to the game. Okay, I thought maybe it was from Empire at War or even Force of uh was commander because they also had this big dropship all the time and i like it that it's dropped from orbit and not spawned in a building it gives something unique yeah uh i would say it's a uh, i think it's the first time that uh the company Pyrrhus has you know the the landing stuff like that and going to the base and dropping units like that but that, but there, i think there's a game i mean there's a modification before me which is very very fully developed i think it's the modern combat i'd say they have these black hawks you know, which is cool i mean they can uh rappel going down the battlefield like you know that's i think that's one of the possibilities on on how versatile the company heroes engine is but we are limited to the tools that we have but we can do stuff i mean i managed to make the star wars itself coming slowly to a close what would you say did you learn during those many years of development? I would say patience. <laughs> a good one. Yeah, patience. I mean, uh, the company peers is a, a beast to tame, I would say, because um, I mean, they're very capable of everything. Like you can do anything out of it. Like you have this prospect on this game, like, oh, I think it's possible to make Star Wars like that. Maybe it's possible to create, you know, space battles on it. but. Uh, I, I'm assured that uh, you will be surprised to the limitations. So you have to adapt on the engine itself. You have the patience, you know, the timing. It's not always moving, I would say, because some mothers, I would say, tend to burn out, which I'm sad. I, I actually burn out at some point on the doing modification because I have to manage time and I had to stop for a year. And when I got back and have the you know the passion again to do stuff and then i just go and go you know just just balance stuff i would say patience and balance the things that you want to do don't go over the top when you're doing stuff uh, because you're going to be disappointed so you have to you know slow down on doing things like that accomplish uh things little by little and then experiment you know test things out and then when you manage to make that thing work and it works perfectly in your own way or something like that yeah, just go continue and do stuff yeah i guess time is always the biggest enemy in any project yeah i agree i guess since you don't have the biggest team i guess help is always welcome where can they contact you basically uh actually you can just you know go to our mod db page because there's it all where it all started from the mod db page yeah you can just find us out there and then go to our discord you know chat us out you know we're welcome to anyone who wants to help and it's much needed right now and uh, you can come and go if you want you know that's fine by us because it's more of like a passion project but you know with this current release that we have right now we have this i mean minor pressure but i think that's only for me because i'm doing stuff right now yeah, you can contact us on ModDB or Discord channel like that. Just chat me or chat Sir Psycho or anyone who is helping the developers. You can help us out. Any help is appreciated. And I think we could go to terms, you know, uh, we could talk a lot of things, you know, the possibilities. I mean, we could coexist, I would say, because some others can coexist because they have this idea and they just break down, you know, which is sad because, you know, some people just want to help, you know, and the people just you know, manage to get to be say, annoyed or something like that. Because there are some people who are like, uh, you know, I could do this, you know, you should add this like that. But you have to come to terms, you know, to the how things work, you know. So at least you have an idea on how modding company heroes, which is a plus, I would say. Because teaching company heroes modding is, I mean, it's not that easy, but, you know, it's a lot. <laughs> Based on my experience up until now, I'm still, you know, not the well versed on modding company heroes. Complicated stuff like that. So yeah, perfect. Yeah, always good that the community is at least stable enough and helping each other. It's a good bonus, I would say, for you guys also. <laughs> yeah, I would say. I mean, there, there's a lot of. Uh, I mean, that's not a lot, but there are people who want to help, like that from 
the Total War modding community, which is awesome because that's a much more upgraded game and they can do better stuff than us. Like the texturing like that, you know, the the more intricate, you know, the art side. So I actually learned can learn from them too. Which is cool, you know. Okay, then basically my last question would be it's a little bit a side story here, but it just released Company of Heroes 3. Do you plan to play it? Do you maybe even plan to switch there in the future? Well, uh, I mean, I wanted to play it. <laughs> Actually, I'm hyped. I played the beta. It's very janky, I would say. I think they have released like two betas before. The Alpha, very janky, still using the CoH2 assets. It may be some from Company of Heroes 1. I, I don't know. Then they released the beta, which is, I mean, it's it's okay. It's good. I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's good now. Uh, when the last time I played, but now I would I would say I would play it. But currently, the devs I suppose uh, assess this about the modding the game, so they actually wanted to release some tools, you know, to do more intricate stuff like Company of Heroes One that we have right now. But actually, that's very in the near future, and and I do hope that they could release the tools for Company of Heroes because. A company Pierce 3 because Company Pierce 2 was very, very limited. How I wish I could put my modification on Company Pierce 2 because Company Pierce 2 is much more, you know, advanced game, but they didn't even release tools. Just you can just do skins and you know edit tuning packs. And that's all. And actually they they are releasing a skin editor for Company Pierce 3. But you know, that's I mean that will not complete the whole package of modding a game to a newer game, you know. Mods do make a game immortal. And I'm an advocate for that because there's a lot of old games who has this modification <laughs> that's so very out of the top, like a very own game itself. So I hope, I mean, yeah. Definitely, we're on the same page here. I also think mods are not the most important, but one of the most important aspects in gaming. It keeps the games alive. Yeah. And it's sad to say that the most amazing gaming features are from mods or only are in mods included. Can I agree to that? You know, it's actually uh, amazing to see this, you know, these talented people uh, like us or something like that, that they can, you know, do stuff, you know, like open up the game itself, the files, because the Hogwarts Legacy has mods. Like on the very first day when it's latched, you can, you can add stuff on it. And it's weird and it's cool so they can it's amazing you know the modern community itself it's amazing sometimes it's very iffy when it comes to that but you'll see a lot of amazing modifications on different games which i respect actually uh it's cool you know it definitely is yeah but i would say this is basically the part of the video where i open the mic to you is there anything you would like to add anything we have missed I think it's all good, but you know the issues that you're seeing on the bug report and other stuff like that. Yeah, it's all fixed. Hopefully, I think it's all fixed. So I, I'm gonna be releasing this patch in a couple of days. I still need one more guy to, you know, to I would say accept the changes that I made. But yeah, more stuff is coming. Uh, I could promise that. You know, I mean, uh, I'm very very thankful to the people who waited so long for it to be released. That's why I uh, managed to release it a bit of a hot pick. You know, I mean, it's it, uh, it's a bit of cringy stuff like that because a lot of people kept waiting. Oh, we're going to release. We keep delaying like that. You're supposed to release this Christmas or New Year. And I was like, you know, you know man, let's just release it, man. Like, you know, it's hot big ass. I mean, that's, at least they can still enjoy the, the fruits of our labor, you know. They could play it, you know, judge it, you know, because uh, I myself, I'm open always to criticism. So they could say stuff like that, and then I'll try to understand it and make it justifiable for them. Explain why they do that or why they say that, you know. So yeah, so expect more things. The balance is coming, and I see. I I hope you will enjoy the upcoming patch. I would say, but you have to delete all your files again. I'm sorry, I'm very sorry. You have to delete all the mod, mod files again. I know some people are having hard time to install it. Uh, maybe I would launch a GIF, you know, installation, stuff like that. So people would, wouldn't get confused on how to install it or just wreck things up. Well, I also have to say, those modern kids have to learn. It's not that hard. Yeah, I have to agree with that. Some people, 
you, you, you just have to drag and drop in there, man. Like, just do that. You know, I mean, I mean, I'm not that, you know, uh, like that getting angry with them. Like, oh, you're too, too dense to do that. I mean, it's very easy. I mean, you're using laptop your whole life. You're just gonna have to drag and drop like that. But I mean, I'm here to help. I'm always here to help. Just ask, you know, yeah, clear things up and then you know, we can help you out. It's always good that the developer team is doing that. Yeah, because, uh, you know, I wanted to share, you know, uh, the experience that I'm doing right now to the people who wants to play it. Because, you know, I'm having this positive feedback, you know, it's good, you know, it, it boosts us up. You know, we enjoy doing this stuff, you know, even we're doing ups and downs like that. Yeah, uh, it, it's it's a fun gimmick, I would say. It's a fun, happy, you know, it's a passion project for us. And uh, of course, yeah, I mean, thanks for having me on your video. Uh, you know, it's an honor. Oh, you're more than welcome. And you're also happy to join me in the future if you have a big update coming or any news you would like to share. You're always welcome to join me. Yeah, I would be glad. Yeah, anytime. Okay, I would say that's it for this video. Leave us a comment, tell us what you think about the game, and of course, play the game. Until next time, bye bye.